My name is Dan Richter. I started working here at Duke in 1987. Quite a few soil scientists and ecologists and policy people are really interested in using soil management to try to deal with the uh, CO2 problem we have in the atmosphere. And I'm on the cautious side. We've got really good understanding of how much carbon are in the trees because we can measure them and they're above ground, easy to study. Whereas soil is a different story entirely. When I moved here, a retiring person from the Forest Service, Carol Wells, quite literally said, you, you want this field experiment? The Calhoun is in the Sumter National Forest, which was assembled in the 1930s, basically because it was abandoned land. It's one of the most agriculturally eroded landscapes in America. The original objectives of the long-term soil experiment were to learn how to grow trees on old, eroded, played out cotton land. So in 1957, Forest Service scientists planted trees in 16 big plots. And then every five years, they would go back to these plots and measure the trees and, and collect the soil. And they kept, saved all their soil samples. We have the samples from 1962 to present every five years approximately. We've, over time, we've, we've perfected uh, microanalysis. One moment, we realized that we could use carbon-14 to look at the forest incorporation of carbon into the ecosystem. Carbon-14 is called bomb carbon. Almost doubled the amount of heavy carbon, bomb carbon, in the CO2 of the atmosphere worldwide. That carbon is like a signature of the forest carbon regenerating the soil organic matter. We have statistically determined that the deepest layer of soil has lost carbon. It's a clear signal over the decades. But here we have, uh, you know, the COVID cohort of <laughs> leaves right on top, 2020. You can go down a little bit and you can see how perhaps this is 2018. The decomposition in hardwood forests is, is relatively rapid. So maybe 18, 17, not too many years before the organic matter just loses all of its identifiable parts and it basically turns into humus. We typically study the soil so, so superficially. If we bring geologists into the into the conversation, we get a much deeper picture of the earth and its weathering zone, its geohydrology. I look at the critical zone as an expanded ecosystem where biology meets geology, where rocks meet life. We can uncover real surprises. I think one of the main uh, lessons of the Calhoun ex experiment so far has been that uh, not only is, is the forest with its biomass and its organic horizon on the top of the soil, a very powerful carbon sink over several decades. We don't know what's going on below ground. It takes, you know, generation to generation. I'm about to hand off the Calhoun long-term soil experiment to Dan Markowitz, and he'll be the third generation holder. He did his PhD on the study. He'll be a good, good shepherd, and I'm sure he'll turn around and hand it off. But that's what we do at the Calhoun.